na 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 Hang on a second. How do you spell the word na? What a coincidence. Because this morning, we're going to be talking about sodium hyponatremia. A very good morning. It's Dr. Ryan here again. Thank you for joining me as we embark on a journey through hyponatremia. Thank you once again for liking and sharing my videos. This is going to be our sixth algorithmic approach in nephrology and our 19th overall in internal medicine. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos as much as I am enjoying bringing them to you. So, you know, I am a third year registrar in internal medicine living here in Durban, South Africa with my beautiful wife and my uh, precious baby boy. And, you know, this being lockdown time, we've been ordering takeout uh, sometimes. So the other night we ordered chicken from this very uh, popular Portuguese uh, chicken franchise here in Durban. And I had a look at the, the salt packet, you know, the packet that contained the salt. And I thought it had a very profound saying. It said, throw some salt over your shoulder for good cluck. <laughs> I thought that was quite foul. Anyway, so let's cut to the chase. We're talking about hyponatremia today. So just a quick foundation, water homeostasis, which controls serum sodium concentration, is regulated by thirst and the hormonal interplay between the central nervous system and the kidneys. Maintenance of normal serum sodium concentration is important for preserving cell volume. Hyponatremia is generally defined as a serum uh, sodium concentration above 142 molar equivalents per liter. Clinical manifestations of hyponatremia depend on its duration and severity. Acute hyponatremia is often symptomatic with manifestations that include thirst, muscle weakness, decreased level of consciousness, delirium, convulsions, coma, and brain shrinkage, which can lead to osmotic demyelination syndromes and vascular rupture with intracranial hemorrhage. Chronic hyponatremia is often asymptomatic. Now, hyponatremia can be associated with extracellular hypo, hypovolemia, euvolemia, or hypervolemia. Hypovolemic hyponatremia results from extracellular loss of hypotonic fluid. Um, hypovolemic uh, hyponatremia can be caused by renal or extranenal processes as outlined here. Euvolemic hyponatremia results from extracellular deficiency of pure water. And hypervolemic hyponatremia results from extracellular gain of hypertonic fluid. So acute symptomatic hyponatremia should be corrected rapidly with infusion of hypotonic fluid and serial monitoring of serum sodium concentration. Chronic hyponatremia should be corrected judiciously to prevent cerebral edema and seizures. So let's dig into this. We said on the left, hypovolemic hyponatremia has five causes, separation to three renal and two extrarenal. The three renal is usually overzealous diuresis, osmotic diuresis, and post-obstructive diuresis. So three diuretic situations there. Extrarenal hypovolemic hyponatremia can be attributed through to GI losses, uh, vomiting, diarrhea, and the like, and skin losses, right? Then euvolemic hyponatremia. So here the patient is clinically euvolemic. So the JVP is not raised, neither is it low, and the patient is not clinically uh, overhydrated or dehydrated, right? So here are the causes of the low free water intake, diabetes insipidus, uh, which we know is a problem with the posture of pituitary, is just unable to elaborate. Um, antidiuretic hormone and then of course intercellular water shifts looking at hypervolemic hypernatremia here we're looking at mineral corticoid excess thinking about Cushing's uh, and cons right and exogenous sodium intake as well so you've got two on the hypervolemic side five from the hypovolemic side three from the euvolemic side giving you 10 causes of hypernatremia so I just want to uh, as always motivate you a little today you know that God changes caterpillars into butterflies, sand into pearls, and coal into diamonds using time and pressure. And let me tell you, he is working on you and he is working on me too. We said the other day that we need to learn to go through pain because that's where growth is. Now, the book of Hebrews, and we don't know who the author of the book of Hebrews is, but inspired by the, the Holy Spirit, he says, Our fathers... Sorry, this is chapter 12, verses 10 and 11. Uh, our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness. Now listen to this. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So I think we, should, we need to learn to go through discipline because that's where growth is. Yeah, it's painful at the time, but it's going to be for your own good in the long run. 
So God bless you. I hope that uh, you've been uh, motivated and encouraged. Tomorrow, of course, we're going to be tackling our seventh algorithm in nephrology, hyponatremia. Have yourselves a wonderful day, man. I'll see you soon.